everybody. Thanks for joining me. What I want to talk about today are rulers. And you might not think we need to talk about rulers, but rulers are a very important part of leatherworking. And there's so many different kinds of rulers. Uh, the first thing we need to talk about is measurement. Are you going to be doing imperial or metric? Uh, and many of us that are raised, born and raised in the U.S. have never ever thought about doing anything but imperial. But there is a whole new world out there with metric and there's a lot of advantages to working in metric. At least that's been my experience over the last few years. So what I want to do is show you all my rulers, show you uh, the advantages of each one of them. Uh, I've got a, quite a collection going. I think over time as you build up uh, your leatherwork practice, you probably will acquire a lot of rulers as well. So let's flip to the overhead camera and I'll show you some of these. So we've got a wide assortment here. I want to start with uh, three. I actually own three of these rulers. Uh, they are my favorite. Uh, they happen to be in Imperial, so they are in inches. Uh, but I like them because they've got a lot of marks. It's a thick ruler. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. Uh, but they have a lot of marks uh, all along them. This is the draft and cut ruler. And uh, I'll have links in the notes on where you can go purchase these. Uh, 18 inches long uh, and as long as you keep remembering that three millimeters is an eighth of an inch you can do some metric thinking with these rulers as well uh, one thing you should know with these clear rulers is that I back them this is a product called Invisigrip and uh, this is like a lifetime supply I purchased this years ago it's by OmniGrid and it actually is a clear plastic liner that you can put on the bottom of your ruler. So just cut off a strip, whatever you need, and you just attach it to the back. It's this particular kind of plastic that attaches to the back of rulers. So you see here I've got it, this is a two inch wide ruler. I've got this at about an inch and a half wide and you just adhere it to the back. It really makes it very non-slip. Uh, so I always have to feel which side I'm working with to know which side has that backing on it, but it is on every single one of my rulers. So that's a tip for you there. Uh, this is my favorite metric ruler. I do use this a lot um, and it's marked every five millimeters where, where this one is the equivalent of every three millimeters uh, it's marked. This one is marked every five millimeters. This is a 50, uh, a 50 centimeter ruler, a half a meter, super nice. The other important thing with all these rulers is you want something that measures the whole way to the end. You don't want the measurement to stop and there to be a gap uh, because that's impossible to line up every single time. You want to be able to put your leather right up to the edge and know that the measurements are starting. So I love this ruler. I got this over in Belgium with my friends and uh, these are hard to get in the US but a super duper ruler. Uh, these are both, you, you can get these here in the US. This is a rum old. Uh, this is a, a 30 centimeter ruler, 300 millimeters. Uh, again, a super nice ruler. I use this quite a bit. This one happens to be blank on the back. Uh, this one's slightly different. This is by Pacific Arc and it's a 30 centimeter on one side and 12 inches on the other. So this is a very versatile ruler if you're flipping back and forth, which is really what I do, flipping back and forth between uh, metric and imperial. Uh, these are super nice. They're not very expensive. This one has inches on one side, millimeters or centimeters on the other side. I keep one of these by my sewing machine. I keep one of these by my skiving machine. It's used constantly by my skiving machine. So you may want to get three or four of these. They're, they're super handy. Um, this is a new ruler that I've picked up. This is actually a French ruler. I got this from Mondo in Paris and uh, it's a self-centering ruler. So here you see zero. You want to come out five centimeters, 10 centimeters, etc. Um, so there's just a lot of helpful measurements here. Again, measurements go the whole way to the end. A super nice ruler. Um, now I've got a couple of things. I've got a, a metal yardstick. Uh, this does not, I'd love to have a one meter stick. Uh, I've yet to find one here in the US that I really like, but um, I use this when I'm cutting long strips. And then I have the Mac Daddy 48 inch, which I know you can't see this whole thing, 
but it's got a T-square on the end. And if you're cutting a lot of belts and you're, you're doing chrome tan leather, you really can't use a strap cutter for that very easily. So this is super heavy duty. You can just lay this T-square right along the, the edge of your workbench and uh, you get a nice straight edge, 48 inches long, which should accommodate almost all your belt straps. And then finally, you don't necessarily have to have measurements on things. If you just need to cut a straight line, a clear piece of acrylic uh, or plexi is super nice for that. Um, at the hardware store, they also sell brass strips. So there might be some place where you don't have the width that you need to accommodate a whole ruler. So a thin brass strip may help you cut a really nice straight line. So lots of options for you. Build your collection over time. And uh, I think you'll really enjoy having a wide variety of rulers. Um, they really help you get your job done. And it's all about accuracy with leather work. So you wanna make sure that you've got great measurements so you've got some great accuracy. As always, if anybody's got any questions, you can reach out to support at leatherworkschool.com or you can find me on Instagram at leatherworkschool.com. I hope your projects are coming along in just a super manner. I can't wait to see what you make. Share those things on hashtag leatherworkschool. I'd love to have a look. Thanks for joining.